Hey everyone, it's Lance with Christianity Minute, and welcome to episode 26 of our study series on Luke. Well, temptation affects us all. Even Jesus was affected. There are three types of temptation as stated in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, desires of the flesh, desires of the eyes, and the pride of life. Jesus was no stranger to this temptation. In fact, that's part of what made him the perfect sacrifice. The fact that he was tempted in every way, but did not succumb to temptation, even in times of extreme weakness. Today, we continue reading about Jesus' temptation as Satan offers him the desires of the eyes. Let's read in Luke chapter 4, verses 5 through 8. It reads, And the devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And he said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Last week, we talked about fasting and how it weakens the body, and why this made an opportune time for Satan to tempt Jesus. Here's a link to last week's study, just in case you missed it. Today's temptation was a little different than him being physically weak, though. There are many religious groups who deny that Jesus ever was a man, but simply God who looked like man. The thing is is that he went through the whole gamut of being human, from birth to death. While he had the Holy Spirit at his disposal, he only used it to further God's plan for salvation. We talked about last week how he never did anything selfishly or for his own gain. To do such a thing, like turning the rocks into bread to ease his hunger, would have been against God's nature and therefore sinful for Jesus. He wasn't able to overcome these things because he was God. It was because of his dedication as a man. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 through 18. It reads, Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, He himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the ones who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Well, what it all says is that Jesus was still a man, the same as you and I. And the devil tries at this weakness next, offering him a rule of all the lands, showing him all the kingdoms of the world in an instant. Now, How did he do this? We can only speculate. But he was able to do so. Any human would be tempted by this. This includes Jesus. Imagine being the complete and uncontested ruler of the world. (laughs) Seems pretty unbelievable, right? You know, there have been a lot of people who have tried to achieve that goal. Alexander, Napoleon, Hitler. Well, Satan was offering Jesus just that. The devil and Jesus both knew that the promise could be delivered upon as well. Jesus was tempted, according to Hebrews, just as he had been when he thought of the bread that could make him quell his hunger. All Satan wanted was for Jesus to worship before him. Well, as tempting as it may have been, and some might say that the road to power in the world today for any position of leadership in any nation, (laughs) it goes through this route. Jesus quotes scripture again, quoting from the Old Testament. Now, scholars believe that he's quoting from this verse in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 13. It says, It is the Lord your God you shall fear. Him you shall serve, and by his name you shall swear. But it's possible he's quoting from the commandments. But you know what? That doesn't matter a whole lot where it's quoted from exactly. But Jesus' response is absolutely perfect. Not only does he tell Satan no, but he also tells him why, and doesn't leave anything to any kind of question. Well, we have to be the same way. Jesus brings this type of temptation up again in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24 through 26. It reads, 
Then Jesus told his disciples, If any one would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? You know, it really makes me wonder if he was thinking back to the time of his own temptation, at least one time, whenever he was saying this to the disciples, and to you and me. Well, next week, we'll continue in Luke with the next temptation. That's been your Christianity Minute for this week. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you like this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing and sharing with your friends. I work very hard to make sure that all things said are scripturally accurate. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in that comment section below. And I'll see you next time right here on Christianity Minute.